Good morning, folks. I actually already recorded a quick video all the way on the other side of the lake. Last time, three, four days ago, I killed them crappy all the way shallow over there. This morning, I ran straight there, no fish shallow. There was some in the middle of the cove, but none on the bank. These fish migrate not just, you know, between the seasons, but day and night. Uh, it's still the end of February and at night we dip below freezing, actually. And this shallow water you dip below freezing, it gets cold real fast. And I want to go fish shallow again, but that will be in the afternoon. In the afternoon we will get some sun. The temps should go all the way to the low 60s. And I'm sure they will push shallow again. But right now, when I came this morning, the temps were 34, 35 air temps. And I was in the middle of the cove there, the wind was blowing me. I know it sounds like nothing here. You don't feel nothing here. But with just this fleece, with 35 degrees air temp in the middle of the open cove over there, it didn't feel nice. I lasted about 30 minutes. So I haven't fished the spillway in a long time. These fish don't like the spillway in the winter. But right now scattered fish is about everywhere. We have water temp. You see some scattered fish. Water temp 50.4 degrees. So I'm gonna fan around here. I dropped my talon so I don't use the trolling motor too much. I'm gonna fan around here and we got a fish here at least hour, hour and a half, kill some time. We're gonna catch fish. I'm not, I'm saying kill time, but we're gonna catch fish. And as soon as the sun comes up and the temps go into the high 50s and maybe low 60s, we're gonna go all the way down. And I wanna pitch by the bank and catch this crappy that's so aggressive. But anyway, Let's uh, enjoy fishing the spillway a little bit. I say spillway, but there is no fish shallow even here. I already scanned. By the way, my batteries are just fine right now. Uh, it took two days to charge the dead lithium battery. I'm back to full. I mean, I kept charging and charging and charging. It stayed on 90% forever but then it did eventually go back to green status so i believe everything is good with my batteries and we should have a good day of fishing now in the afternoon they say the wind will pick up and go to like 15 17 miles per hour but that's different because it will be sunny and warm and warm wind I can take. 60 degrees with wind is one thing. 35, 30, 38 degrees air temp with wind, something totally different. I'm getting a nip right in front of the boat. And today we're gonna be fishing with the St. Croix Legend Elite Panfish. I said in one video that I don't know if I published it or not because I record like two, three videos every day that I go fishing. Different videos, one from this spot, one from the other spot. I cannot edit and publish everything. But I said in one video that the Presso Air AGS, using it for swim bait fishing is kind of a waste. You really don't need much for swim bait fishing. Uh, you don't even need, you can swim bait fish with nylon just fine. I swim bait fished with the Sensi light and some pretty fat line. And I was catching fish after fish, look. So I was thinking, why am I using my Presso Air AGS for swim bait fishing? So what if I can? Um, you always have to be a little bit extra careful with the Presso Air AGS because of the 
99% carbon business. Oh. Let me get my net and start boat flipping these fish. Not boat flipping, start uh, netting at least. I don't know, we should net more fish. I keep trying to boat flip them because one good thing about the St. Croix Legend Elite Penfish is you can safely boat flip fish. The rod is not gonna break. It feels like made of rubber, but in a good way. Um, you say rubber and everybody shrugs shoulders. Ugh, no sensitive. It's plenty sensitive. And it feels rubbery, it feels in a way like uh, People will say this is sacrilegious to even mention, but the flexi blank of the St. Croix Legend Elite Penfish reminds me a little bit of the Anniversary Presso Air AGS. But the thing is, the Presso, the Anniversary Presso can achieve all of this flexibility with more parabolic blank this one is not as parabolic and with higher sensitivity it's easy to make flexible rod if you put a lot of resin and you don't have good sensitivity it's difficult to make a rod that flexes a lot and is still sensitive that's why the anniversary is my new favorite rod that rod is spectacular. Hopefully one, one day this rod will cost like $50 and everybody will be able to afford it. That would be amazing. I actually, you know, you know how many rods I bought and sold? Those of you who follow my channel. I bought and sold some expensive Japanese rods. The Carabas, the Corto, the Beleza. I sold a lot of Japanese, good Japanese rods. But I never sold my Saint Croix. Never even put it for sale, never. I never sold my Saint Croix. I want you guys to know, when I recommend a rod, I mean it. I used to recommend the St. Croix Legend Elite Penfish because I think it's amazing rod and everybody who says it's not sensitive and that and all of that is full of the brown stuff it's sensitive enough and it just feels so enjoyable to fish I don't know how to describe it I'm never selling the St. Croix Legend Elite Penfish. The reason I stopped recommending it this, this year, it didn't, it didn't make the buying guide, is because two, three years ago, this rod used to cost 300, and the JDM rods used to cost 300. Now everything changed. And then I used to say, okay, it's not as sensitive as the JDM rods, but it's more flexy and it has some kind of charm. I don't know, I love this rod. But they were the same price, so they were trade-offs. Like this one, you can fish the bank, you can uh, hike. You know, you don't have to worry. You can put it down on the boat. You don't have to worry all the time that you're going to snap it. Like you can't hike with the Presso Air AGS. You can't drop it just on the aluminum frame of the boat. You gotta be always very careful. And not everybody is careful. And especially Americans, I see them transport their rods with the tips hanging off of the bed of the truck. Just the top three guides are hanging out of the bed of the truck and their rods are always over tightened. The line is over tightened so the tip is bent. So you have a bent tip hanging off the bed of, the bed of a pickup truck. And then the tip snaps and say they go and to Walmart and they want to exchange it and they leave negative. 
they leave negative uh, reviews everywhere the rod is defective these manufacturers don't know what you're doing they're selling bad product dude was transporting it with the tip hanging off the bed of the pickup truck and then he left a negative review that's what i mean okay people who buy 300 dollars or dollar rod they don't do that but still in america the treatment of rods is not as is different people are not as careful as in europe and japan in europe and japan everybody's putting them in these sleeves and everything It's a safer rod to fish with and it still has high-end performance. Zero wobble. We caught a few fish in the beginning. Zero wobble. Sensitive enough. Easy to fish. And so enjoyable to fight fish with. I don't know, so enjoyable to fight fish with. So enjoyable. And it's very well balanced. This rod actually likes light reels. There's a lot of rods that don't like light reels, like the Suara XR 7'6 doesn't like light reels. Even the 6'0 Suara XR, those rods, those rods actually feel very nice with heavier reels. This St. Croix Legend Elite Penfish is balanced so good that actually likes a 150 gram reel amazing rod but what happened now with all of this political nonsense now the JDM rods are really cheap due to the exchange rate dollar versus yuan and St. Croix I don't know why they decided to increase the cost of this rod from 300 now I see it's over 400 dollars now that I cannot justify I understand all about inflation they should sell it for whatever they want to sell it I'm not saying that they're overcharging because I know everybody's costs went up everybody's costs went up I promise you that but they can charge whatever they want but now the road is not competitive I cannot recommend spending over $400 for this rod. Then you have to pay a sales tax on the $400. You have another $50 of sales tax. Price is the only reason I no longer recommend this rod. If it gets to the same price with the Japanese rods again, I will recommend it again. But those of you who bought it, one other thing since I'm yapping about this rod. Uh, rod is nice, do not buy extra fast action. Just do not buy extra fast action of anything. Just period. No question, now what about this, what about that, but what about, no what about. Do not buy extra fast action, I don't care if you're bass angler, carp angler, crappie angler, catfish angler don't buy this is my advice to you remember for life don't investigate don't waste your time what about this brand not what about if you see extra fast action get out of there same with the legend elite do not buy the extra fast action models the regular fast action is very nice you can see it's still fast action it, it bends mostly in the tip but if if this was a nicer bluegill and it pulled you will see it bends in the middle also extra fast action rods don't bend in the middle only tip this is yeah just don't buy extra fast action or rods for anything at all one day one day when you understand actions you will uh, you will come and thank me for not spending thousands of dollars on extra fast action rods. I'm seeing scattered fish, but the bite is very slow. 
I'm actually wondering if I will be more productive twitching a trout magnet. Hmm. Bite is very slow. What is this? Three crap so far. One little basic. And while I'm yapping on this uh, topic, also don't buy extra high gear ratio for anything. I don't care if your body is professional bass angler. I have seen professional bass anglers, by the way, say absolutely ridiculous stuff about tackle. Randy Blaucat is one of them, those of you who know him. This guy is absolutely incompetent. I put all of my reputation. You can tell him I said this. He is absolutely incompetent when it comes to fishing tackle or anything even remotely related to physics or engineering. The stuff that he is saying... Anyway, I don't want to go there, but... Extra high gear ratio is good for nothing. Even if you bass fish. I'm talking about spinning reels, by the way, only. Bait cast reels are a little bit different. Uh, they're a little bit different. They don't have the same transmission. I have seen 9 to 1 gear ratio in the, these bait casting reels. But this, because the spool is so small, it still feels it still feels pretty nice. It feels n absolutely normal. But as far as spinning reels go, don't ever buy high gear ratios for anything. No drop shotting, no finessing. What about this? What about that? I'm just telling. I don't want to argue. Um, okay, I don't know anything about bass fishing. I don't want to argue, but that's my opinion, and I'm. 100% certain in, in my opinion. You don't need gear ratio over 6 on a spinning reel for anything. For anything. Caught another crappy and I'm still not happy with the bite. I'm still not happy with the bite. The fish don't fight well. Maybe this reel is too powerful. It's a 45 millimeter handle which I rarely use. I feel I'm just winching on these fish. Maybe I'll twitch trout magnet a few times just to see if they feel nicer with the other handle. My other rod with the trout magnet is uh, with a 35 millimeter handle. So when I fight the fish, there's a little bit of resistance. I uh, enjoy the fight more. This few crappy that I caught here, I just reeled them. Not a lot of fights. See, I, I felt the tap taps just perfectly with the Saint Croix Legend Elite Penfish. People say, oh, it's not sensitive, it's not. Like, sensitive is the only thing in the world. The only. Once a rod is sensitive enough, increasing the sensitivity after that doesn't make a lot of difference. Better, better not sacrifice other things to get a little bit of extra sensitivity, like not having a comfortable handle or not having a clear coat to protect the blank. Once it's sensitive enough, it's sensitive enough. Yeah. If you buy this rod, if you get it on eBay or used or something, buy only the regular fast action models. And when you look for a reel, buy only the models with gear ratio under 6. Now, if you can find under 5, that is the good stuff. I don't want to know anything else. If you find ultralight reel with gear ratio under 5, I guarantee you it will be 
Stella or Vanquish or Presso, it will be some amazing reel. This one is slightly better, maybe bluegill, maybe little bass. Slightly better. Yeah, little bass. Come here, buddy. I'm not gonna lift you. I'm gonna knit you so I can show the fine people at home sitting on the couch, sipping some morning coffee while he froze with the mouth open. This happens frequently with bass, doesn't it? Freeze with the mouth open. How big is it? 12 inches, maybe. Okay. I don't know. I want to do something different. Maybe cast in different direction or something. I still see fish here. I want to fish these fish while they are still here. I don't want to abandon a school of cooperative fish. I don't understand why I'm kind of not satisfied with the bite. I keep catching fish. I don't know if I even need to cut this video here so far. I keep catching fish, but it feels kind of slow, not vigorous. It feels slow and anemic. When I was fishing over there in the shallow water and you catch these bluegill, it was so vigorous and they start running and tugging it. it, it, it my God, it, it, it was such a rush. Now I catch these fish here and they barely tap tap. Feels anemic and slow. And I said in the other video, but I switched all of my swim bait rods back to ester line. No more fluorocarbon for me. Even the very worst fluorocarbons. Eh, they're, they're fine. Like I would fish them instead of nylon, always. But. I mean, Esther, Esther feels so crisp. It feels so crisp. <laughs> yeah, there's another one. It's much better here though. The dam is protecting me from the wind a little bit. I, I have to check the air temp, but it's still chilly. Trust you me, it is still chilly. I really need to come with my heavier clothes in the morning. Oh, first bluegill. I need to come with my heavier clothes in the morning, but I cannot bend with these heavy clothes. Let's go bump this bluegill real fast. I think he's over eight. Just barely, but over eight. That's what I think. Stike. He's eight and a halfer. Who doesn't like an eight and a halfer? And he's in good health. No issues with any. See how the boat is bent? Because I have only one. Because I have only one talon. I like only one talon. Only one talon has advantages. I cannot believe nobody has mentioned the advantages of only one talon. First of all, you're saving a lot of weight. For a small boat, this can be the difference between you know, driving legally and not driving legally. Because there is only so much weight you can put on the transom. Uh, second of all, if there is no fish, I like to swivel left and right. You don't want to lift the talons and reposition the boat every time. I like swiveling. 
If the wind changes direction, you can change direction so the wind is always in your back. If the fish stop biting, you can swivel a little bit in the other direction. I have even fished in the spring bluegill beds. I park right between two bluegill beds and I fish two bluegill beds at the same time. I catch a few fish from one bed and I swivel to the other bed. Catch a few fish from the other bed, swivel back to the first. Well, nothing on this cast. That's the first cast I actually made with no bite at all. Hmm. Okay. I picked up some goop. And the lure is starting to get torn. This is original Kitek, by the way. The water is has the perfect amount of stain. The water has the perfect amount of stain for my taste. I don't know where to cast, maybe that way. I'm kind of on the edge. The fish is in 12, 14, 15 feet of water. But if I go there, my talon will not grab the bottom. So I'm right on the 11 foot edge where my talon would hold. Because if I go there and start to try to fish with the trolling motor, it will spook everything. And if I'm here and casting there, these fish are sitting there undisturbed. And I can fish them all day. I think I can fish here all day. And this fish will, I will never run out of fish. What is wrong with the Saint Croix? These ultralight tackle snobs. Oh, Saint Croix, American garbage. Oh, for me, I like the, which one was this? Where is this? I like, uh, I forgot, there is one rod that comes only with solid tips comes only with solid tips so I, ha I have never tried them it's a well-known brand but everybody tells me I should buy it I want to buy it but they need to make one tubular tip I'm not buying no more solid tip rods one Japanese guy actually from Japan sent me pictures from that rod um, evergreen limber tip he sent me pictures and that solid tip had indeed in his pictures didn't have extra fast action it it had very nice action in his pictures and he is japanese and japanese are very technically educated and i still don't believe him <laughs> i don't know how he took that picture but I still don't want to buy this evergreen limber tip because it comes with solid tip. No solid tip for me, thank you very much. You keep your solid tip for you. I need to do something different. I want to try something different, cast different direction Another cast without a bite. Where to cast? In this one I can't really blame the lure or anything. Is there fish north of me? See, north of me I don't see anything at all. Even south of me I don't see very much. <laughs> Maybe it's time to twitch a little. They're like 50, 60 feet out. Which is okay when you cast a 2 gram Kitek, 60 feet is absolutely not a problem. You just have to wait for it to sink and when I'm talking I can't just wait 10 seconds. There is too big of a pause and I cannot see my lure on the screen. I cannot see my lure on the screen. 
I don't think it's my life scope. I think the problem is my lures are very small. People that you see on YouTube don't use such small lures. But the people who show you everything on live scope, they have nicer bolts than me. That kind of stay still. My bolt doesn't stay still. Even with the back of the bolt pinned with talon, I'm still oscillating left and right and it's too much for live scope to find a baby lure. Another cast without a bite. What to do? It's kind of too fast to reach them with... Um, maybe I'm fishing too slow. Picking up weeds here. Picking up weeds. Let me try to find my lure just to get some kind of direction. See, I can't find my lure even for a second. Unless I'm outside of 60 feet, which is possible. Mm -hmm. Bite, bite. Here he is. Here he is. Man, it feels nice. Feels nice. Oh, bluegill. We got a few bluegill. Okay, let's switch to trout magnet then. Let's switch to trout magnet then. Um, this kitek is torn anyway. Hey, this kitek, no complaints. He caught quite a few quite a few crappy caught one bass no complaints he did a good job and he he has a lot more good job to do but let's let's do a little twitcheroo 1.5 gram tungsten bison color bison color trout magnet six foot one presso air ags 2000 size suare xr with the slow gear ratio and the 35 millimeter handle look at this handle this is a good handle for twitching that's what you want for twitching you want long handle for swim bait? Well, you don't really want it, but for swim bait it's okay because it makes you real slow. But for twitching you want 35 millimeter handle if possible. If you have high end tackle, I mean, if you if you're fishing with budget tackle, don't matter 35, 45. Man, this feels nice. Is it just because I switched the rod? This feels kind of nice. Ow! Oh, I wanted to see. Was this a bluegill? Man, it felt like a jumbo bluegill to me. This felt nice. Dang it. Dang it. Okay, casting distance is not a problem. Even though I'm like one and a half gram lighter. But I told you, Trout Magnet casts very, very, very well. Kitek kind of flops too much. I have a fish, it started pulling from my hand while I was waiting it to sink. Yeah, this twitch business just feels nicer than the... I don't know, it's more... The pulling different... I don't know. It feels more fun. The Twitch business feels more fun. Of course, I miss the big one. Then I connect with the small one. Come on, come on. Ow! Sorry. I don't want it to... One problem with these tungsten jigs that I buy from... 
Daiwa when I fish deep until I make my own heavy jigs is these tungsten jigs folks will not hold glue under any circumstances I don't care if it's hot, cold I put the best super glue, I dry it 24 hours in 80 degrees temperature room temperature it's even above room temperature go fish the next day five fish and they pull it out you need to do the Richard Jean business with gluing something else on the shank first that's so much work even for me I do it sometimes I do it but sometimes can't do this every time my jigs hold glue so good you don't need to do that business with floss on the shank no just the tiniest drop you can possibly drop at the base of the shank then rub the lure left and right around it to kind of spread it you don't need to press if you press you will squeeze it out rub it left and right to spread it I missed two fish on the same cast and just let it dry don't fish it right away let it dry fish it next day preferably three fish I missed is it too late to still connect with a fish I missed three fish four fish I missed is it now too late yeah it is too late now let me examine the word did you separate from the jig yet not yet he's still there which way to cast let's cast that way yep I want to make tungsten jigs too one day but my shop is too small for that yet tungsten jigs are very expensive not just to make one mold is like costs like 10 times tungsten mold costs 10 times more than a lead mold it's just ridiculous so it's not just the cost of manufacturing you have upfront costs and i still don't have my youtube channel is small my clientele is small i cannot start selling tungsten jigs invest so much money hopefully my shop grows soon enough I want to make some other products that again the same thing I have to invest too much money and with the number of customers that I have right now I cannot recover my money for years so hopefully we can do that later but we can definitely make two gram lead jigs that is not a problem we will have at least one two gram lead model and the way i fish i just don't fish very very deep if i fish more than 20 feet i will use a drop shot anyway not a jig head up to 20 feet two gram is kind of okay if you have a nice 2 gram you can fish up to 20 feet with 2 gram still cannot see my jig I just want to know if I'm on the bottom or not I feel there is a lot of bluegill there and a few crappie and you cast and the bluegill, the bluegill they come and uh, uh, they're like a little chihuahua they grab it and start to tear it right away and if you pull the trigger too soon all you're gonna do is get a all you're gonna do is get one of these little chihuahuas and if you wait a little bit more this mama is already bedding or what why is the tail like this 
she doesn't have colors but the tail this is not tail that is man these teeth hurt me this is not tail that is like some bass grabbed it or something this looks tail look on the bottom of the tail where this is what they use to clear this is a huge boogie this one might be nine nine look here boys we're nine and a quarter we're nine and a half nine and a half i think nine and a half doesn't matter water temp still 50.4 still 50.4 i was hoping it would go to 55 today but it's too late now to go to 55. yeah i'm enjoying uh, twitching a little bit better than the swim baiting swim bait was more i don't know here it's more ta -ta 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 i feel more it's not that i'm catching more fish it's more enjoyable. Am I on the bottom? I have not felt a single tap yet. That's why I'm not sure I'm on the bottom. If I was on the bottom, I should have felt a tap. How did I retrieve the whole cast without a tap? Impossible. Mm -hmm. Now I got a tap, but that's definitely a small buoy. Another tap. In a fish. Okay, not an empty cast after all. Not even a boogie. Up the water column. He came up to have it. He came up to have it. Still bolt flipping fish too much. Bolt flipping fish with the Presso Air AGS is just a bad idea. I do not recommend that. Just a bad idea. Sun, the sun is starting to come to show. Sun is starting to show. Pretty soon these fish will disappear. They will go shallow. We're gonna lift anchor. And we're gonna find one tree that has a bunch of crappie and bluegill around it. And then you're gonna see what fun is. But it's still a little too soon. And still a little too soon. I think at least another 30 minutes we need to hang here tight. Tap. He tapped it and spit it out before I can give him the business. Come on, nobody there? They're just no, here's one. See if it's small. It's, it's too fast. He's too fast to be heavy. He's too fast to be heavy. All of these bluegill have a blotch. Genetic. They all have a blotch here. Hmm. They all have a blotch here. <clears throat> Down with the wind. Oh. But this is one and a half gram. Tungsten. 15 feet deep. Still takes a while to sink. I don't know if this one ever sank. 
this one I was wondering why the line is still slack and I pulled and there was a fish and it's a crappie interesting it's the crappie that's coming up the water column and cannot wait to eat it it's the crappie not the bluegill let me bolt flip another fish I used the net only a couple of times I brought the net here I got it ready I got it handy and ready convenient easy to reach and then I never used it I'm casting slightly different directions every cast trying to find some different fish I want to get some more of that 9 inch bluegill either that or a 14 inch crappie that's what I really want but I feel the 9 inch bluegill will be reserved for when they bed or somewhere shallow out here like that it's too lucky there's one though I don't know if it's 9 inch bluegill I don't know if it's 9 inch bluegill feels like a 10 inch fish actually it feels like a 10 inch crappie not bluegill he kind of slow which I like the thing is 10 inch crappie is not impressive 10 inch bluegill would be a personal best for me I caught 9 point oh that's a little basic I caught 9 and 7 eighths bluegill several times from another lake that's like two hours from here I'll go to that lake pretty soon again nine and seven eights several of them even here I believe one time last year I caught nine and seven eights but here they're small but never have I caught a 10 inch bluegill now shell cracker 12 inch I have 11 and 3 quarter actually you know honesty shell cracker yeah way on the bottom now tap 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 so many taps oh good good last fish good last fish perfect way to disconnect from beautiful Tennessee feels very vigorous it will be a bluegill hmm. he's small but I don't want to waste time here I want to clear the spot for this gentleman he ate a micro worm cultivar micro worm he's seven and a half pushing eight but uh, it was still nice one hour of fishing just swiveling around here we caught plenty of fish we hid from the wind we did exactly what we came here to do to kill some time until the sun comes up and pushes the fish shallow so I'm gonna end this episode here folks if the talon would go up sometimes it doesn't but it did so that's the end of this one i'm gonna run all the way shallow find the tree and pitch the float next to the tree but thanks for watching this episode to the end and i see you soon bye bye